Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Maggie here with vlog number 13. And today, I just want to talk about a couple of the other Gen Con games I got to play, which unfortunately I did not get to take home with me. Um, and that is uh, Five Tribes and Abyss. So, I'll start with Abyss because it was kind of off my radar. Um, this is an Asmodee Bombix game has this really unique cover art. So that was like the big chase items that they did, like a bunch of different covers so you could go to their booth really fast and get the one you wanted. So I literally had no idea what to expect when I opened the game. A friend had told me that it was a drafting game, so I guess I had one piece of information. But what it is, is a, how to describe it, it's really hard. So it's Bruno Cathala and Chevalier, um, someone I had not heard of before. Uh, co-designing it and you are trying to recruit underwater lords, um, allies of sea creatures and um, taking over locations underwater. Uh, it all comes off as a little less than thematic, which is not a bad thing for me, but unfortunately everyone I played with was kind of sad at the lack of theme. But what's cool is, so every round you have one of three options. You either go looking for more of these ally cards, you pick up a previously abandoned pile of ally cards, or you use the ones that you found, the ally cards that you found, to recruit these lords. And all the lords have um, different abilities, victory points, all those types of things. And so through the exploration or through the lords, you're also collecting keys that buy locations. So locations, generally speaking, will have a victory point condition, um, based on other things you're doing and maybe some extra victory points are lying around. And so it's a pretty high scoring game. I was surprised at the number of victory points that were in it because you keep playing until someone's recruited seven lords or until you've run out of the lord deck. Um, not bad. Really cool components. Really cool art. Um, I'd say it's a little lighter than my normal game. Uh, we had a few moments where the, the more... So each... Lord has a faction, and some of the factions are just mean. There's a crab people faction, and it's basically like discard your hand, hand size limitations, destroy other things, that kind of stuff. Whereas like the sea wars people just maybe give you victory points. Um, the the octopus people all kind of key off of each other, so you get bonuses the more octopus people you have. Um, so they all have kind of a flavor. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I don't know that I would go and have to play it all the time. I'll, I'll play it if it's on the table. It was blessedly short though. It's like a 45 minute game. And it's really, really simple to teach, which I like a lot. Um, I could probably get through an explanation of that in about five minutes and have people ready to play. There's not that much to it, so that was good. But the thing I really wanted to talk about um, is Five Tribes. So this is another uh, Bruno Casala game, so I'm doing them back to back here. But this is his Days of Wonder debut. And so Days of Wonder every year kind of comes out with one game. And they're really known for high component quality, everything being very complete. They very rarely run out of stock of any of their games. They're just they're a pretty solid company overall. Um, last year's game was called Relic Runners and it had really neat bits, but really weird rules and it was hard to explain to a family. So I think this year Days of Wonder just said, well, let's see what happens if we make a game that's mostly for adults. So this is five tribes, and you start with wandering tribesmen all over the board. So each each tile has three guys at the start, has a victory point number, and a action. On a turn, and this reminds you a lot of Trajan, you're going to pick up all the meeples on one square and move them out in a straight line. So dropping them off one at a time until you run out. The space at which you run out has to have the same color meeple that you're trying to drop off, and you're going to pick up all of that color. So if I drop off a yellow, a blue, and then a red, and on that third square I'm going to pick up all the red, including the one I was just dropping off. Each color meeple has an associated action, so you have effects like the red meeple is an assassination meeple, and that gives you the ability to either knock one meeple off the board or knock a meeple off from, uh, from in front of another player, so um, the only meeples that can be kept in front of you are the white or the yellow meeples. The yellow meeples are points at the end of the game and a 10 point bonus, which is not that many points, 
um, for having the most yellow ones. The white meeples are interesting. They're used to both purchase and usually activate these special god gen cards. I want to call them god cards, but I know they're just genies. Um, you buy those and they give you victory points, anywhere from like 4 to 10 victory points in a 200-ish scoring game, maybe a little less with four players. And a lot of the time they'll have some sort of constant ability or activated ability. Um, you also have green meeples, which give you access to cards. So another aspect of this game is kind of a set collection where you want as many unique goods as you can get. There's like eight different types of goods, and each time you collect a set of those, you're going to get a whole bunch of points. So we've discovered that it's really only worth it to get one set unless you can get all the way up to two. So the more green meeples you remove from the board, the more cards you get. But unfortunately, you don't get much of a choice. They're kind of laid out in a giant line, and you get them from one side to another. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a color meeple, but that's the basic idea, is that you pick up the meeple, whatever color you chose is the ability you take, and then whatever tile that was on that you picked up all the meeples from, those also have abilities. So anything from building a palace, growing a palm tree, going to the market to buy cards, um, buying a, a gin, there's, there's all kinds of different things. And so the last part of this is that if, when you pick up your meeples for the turn, it's now an empty tile, you get to claim it, and you get victory points for it. So a lot of the game is deciding how best to claim tiles without giving too much to other players. So if there's a formerly empty tile and I leave only one meeple on it when I'm kind of making my chain, then I know that they're going to be able to claim that. So if I want them to claim that so they don't get something else that I'm looking for, that's a good idea. But it's really a balance of what colors you leave with what meeples and trying not to make groups of the same color meeple because those abilities get more powerful. And so we sat down to play it and I thought, well, okay, I, I get all the rules, sure. So we all kind of approached this game as if it was a Days of Wonder, very simple game. And the more we played, the more calculation, math, strategy came out. And I realize now that playing with players like us, uh, that game gets <laughs> really, in a good way, bogged down on itself. You, you sit and you ponder and you're thinking and you're trying to find the six different ways you can use it. And our, uh, we had a tendency at the beginning of the game never to leave meeples on open spaces, like one meeple on an open space because it could be claimed so easily. So we built up these big tiles full of meeples. Then, lucky duck us, we realized if you had like eight meeples on a tile, you can drop meeples off in such a way where you empty the square, you make a line, you drop a meeple off, you make another line, and you end in the square you started in, completely controlled by yourself, for all the victory points and actions, it's a really powerful ability, so you never ever want to leave that many meeples in one place. So our whole game would have been different, I think, if we had realized that from the beginning, because we basically made a giant desert out of half of the board. Um, so you live and you learn, but we, we had a very high scoring game, and I think our next one will be less high scoring. Um, I did. I did enjoy it. I thought it was much more interesting than I thought it would be. I think Five Tribes is going to be a huge hit. I think it's going to sell really well all year. I think it's going to be another one where you can add it to your collection guilt-free. You can get tons of people to play with you. And if you do play with a family, because I mean, I think it's, it's not inappropriate for families to play. I think we'll probably play it with Brian's daughter. Uh, I think you just have to leave some of that calculation out. You may have to just let it go and take a more intuitive approach to it. Um, I know that everyone in the room just cringed when I said that. Uh, not everyone has the ability to just not take the best move or not think about the best move. So take that as you will, but I think kids will get bored and <laughs> watching you count things. So that's something to be thought about. And last thing I'll leave you with today, um, we played another couple games of Imperial Settlers, and I know I talked about this yesterday, and I said go buy it. Just be careful. The first time you play against someone, if you've played 
a few times and they've never played, they're going to have a miserable game. Um, Imperial Settlers, you have to know the deck, you have to know the strategy, you got to know what engine you're looking for and what cards you need to find. And so it's happened twice now that I've sat down to teach someone and they kind of miser m were a little miserable all the way through it because they're watching other people successfully get these cards and key points and things that they needed. And so I would just warn people ahead of time that it takes at least maybe play a couple learning rounds or something and then restart because they're, they're going to hate, hate on you the whole time. Um, but it gets better. Uh, the game is amazing, so they just have to get through their first one. Um, I guess that's all for now. Right? Bye, bye, bye.